What's going on everybody? Sean Daniel with Guitar Control here and today we are connecting some pentatonic forms for some bluesy pentatonic goodness. So make sure to click the link below to grab the tab and away we go. We have two forms and two chords to go with those forms, alright? So A minor and G major are going to be our chords of choice. And A minor pentatonic form one is going to be our first guy we're dealing with. And then G form five is going to be the second one. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to play a little bit of the chords. And then start connecting them together because just being able to riff endlessly up and down one shape isn't really doing you a whole lot of good from a musicality standpoint. So uh, I kind of wanted to talk about bridging different forms together and then seeing maybe some of the chords behind those forms to give you more of like an idea of how to practically use these in some of your playing, okay? So again, you probably already know these, the A minor chord is just open A, 2D, 2G, 1B, open E. So just A, C, and E notes together, and uh, open G chord is 3E, 2A, open D, open G, open B, and 3E, those are just G, B, and D notes. Now, in certain keys, uh, specifically the key of A minor or C major, there will be a pentatonic scale that goes with one of these, each of these chords, okay? So like we said, A's pentatonic minor form one is gonna look like this. E string, 5-8, a string, 5-7, D, 5-7, G, 5-7, B, 5-8, E, 5-8, okay? So that's gonna be the first uh, figure on the tab and the link below. And the second figure is gonna be the form five starting on a G. So E string, 3-5, A, 3-5, D, 2-5, G, 2-5, B, 3-5, E, 3-5, okay? So it's a good idea to maybe just get warmed up to drill a couple of these forward and backwards, A minor, and then G's form five. Backwards, if you're a wild man. Okay? Now, what we wanna do is to separate the, the barrier in your mind that sees these as two different shapes, okay? This is something that a lot of people struggle with, myself included. It's like, okay, I drill one shape at a time, but like, what do I do with these? How do I move these around? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in the G one, just the first four notes, okay? Super simple, you don't even have to lead with your middle finger, you can lead with whatever finger you want. I'm using my pointer finger to my ring finger. Three, five, three, five. Now once I get these first four notes, I'm gonna slide into form one. Okay, so we're breaking that barrier right there, right there. Five to seven, we're crashing through like a freight train, just destroying those links in your mind, right? Now we've gone from form five to form one, and we're gonna kind of finish the D string right here on form one. So we start in form five, E string, three, five, A string, two, five, slide into form one, and then keep going, progressing through form one, through the D string, so. All right. You can kind of start linking them together, add a little swing to it. You can play them however many times in a row you want, you can go. Again, be creative with it, but I'm gonna put that on the tab so you kind of have the framework in, okay, this is how. I'm breaking the gap between those two, but we're not done. No, we're gonna jump all the way to the top to, of form one and start backtracking, okay? So after we do the first part, we end with your ring finger on the seventh fret of the D string. We're gonna jump, go on a total blues journey to the eighth fret of the high E string and play the last four notes in that A minor Form one. So, all those endless hours you spent practicing and just drilling back and forth are coming in handy because we're actually just going straight through the last four notes. Then here is where we break back into form five, okay? So if you remember, it's, it's, it's interesting to kind of think this way, but if, you, if your hand is in form one position, I want your mind's eye to be kind of focusing in on forms five, form five's position. So even though our hand is right here, we're thinking of 
maybe the end of the previous form, the one that links on top of it. Once you start linking these pentatonic shapes and forms together, you'll be able to really navigate the fretboard uh, pretty fluidly. So again, we're going backwards, the last four notes, breaking into form five, and then backing up to the second fret on the G string, okay? Which, this note right here happens to be an A. So this is gonna lead us back to A minor once we start adding the chords, but I wanna do the whole, uh, the whole pentatonic pattern that we have going on right here, okay? Starting in form five, three, five, A string, three, five, sliding to seven, D string, five, seven, jumping to the top of the shape, eight, five, back into form five, Okay, you can just really drill that on its own. Okay, now if you just do it straight like that, it still doesn't sound super musical. It just sounds kind of like an exercise, you know? So that's why you want to add a little bit of a swing to it, a little bit of a feel, so it's not always so even. It's not like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Maybe. It... And then you can kind of just get creative, and instead of having to break back and forth, you can maybe stay in one shape like I just did there. You can kind of just maybe double stop through it like we've done in other lessons on this channel, where, again, double stopping is just taking two of those notes at the same time, playing them together. So that an example of that would be a... Okay? Now, kind of a... Uh, a fun creative way to do it is to start some kind of strumming pattern with the chords, like A minor. This is just an A minor to G major progression, okay? So one, two, three, four, a bar of each. Strum it however you want. If you're kind of having a hard time getting like a swing of it, just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and start adding in. You don't always have to break through, you can just start getting like familiar with maybe just this one form. I just stayed in form five the whole time there, right? It'll sound good over any chord. Now it's one thing to be able to pair A minor with the A minor pentatonic, G major with G's form shape, but always keep in mind that those aren't like hard and fast rules that you have to stay there, really. Over an A minor chord, you can start here, end up wherever you want in some of those shapes. So I think, really, this one is good because it kind of takes you all throughout, forward and backwards, kind of a circular thing that starts you from this G, and then you end up kind of going backwards through an ending on an A minor, okay? So really, these things are totally movable. Just think of... No matter what key you're in, if you ever see a minor chord, just take, uh, like, let's say something with E minor, right? We can do it in an open type thing here, or we can do it all the way down here. All these pentatonic shapes are movable. That's why it's good to be able to track root notes. Same thing if we had, like I said, the one that uh, sits right below E, if the seventh fret on the A string is an E. Remember, just like it was from A to G, the same thing is from E to D. So maybe you'd have like an E minor to D minor that you jump in with uh, some of these shapes. Okay, so it's really just being thoughtful about, okay, I know the pentatonic forms, and if you don't know the pentatonic forms, learn the pentatonic forms, at least a few of them to get you started. And then being like, okay, well this is more than just a scale that sounds, you know, bluesy going up and coming down. Think of the chord that would pair nicely with that. Usually it's either just a major or minor chord that works with any of those shapes. And sometimes you can even pair like a minor pentatonic with a major chord like G major and A minor pentatonic. They'll sound great together, you know? But it's always gonna resolve depending on how you're playing on the chord that maybe is most closely associated it with it where your tonal center is and stuff like that. Don't get discouraged by any of that. It's all about just learning these positions, finding out how you can connect those to different chords, and then like I said, just being thoughtful. Being thoughtful about your practicing, your playing is something I always try to preach as often as possible because I know it can be kind of daunting 
trying to remember all the stuff, but if you think of what you're doing while you're practicing, this stuff just tends to solidify more. And I think cool examples uh, like this and other stuff we have on this channel are really helpful in that kind of guitar journey. So definitely let us know what you think and feel free to check out the other videos on this channel if you haven't already, uh, because a lot of other great instructors, myself included, teach on here all sorts of genres, all sorts of lessons uh, with different examples and stuff that is really helpful. And we always are looking for your feedback. So hit us up in the comment section and we'll get back to you as soon as you can. Thanks a lot.